Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the Java series. This time I'm going to teach you about the calendar and the Gregorian calendar in Java. Yeah guys, so I'm back. I know it's been a long time since I've made a video in this series, or any of my series kind of, because I've been kind of busy uh, lately. So yeah, sorry about that, but I'm back now. So what I'm going to teach you about this episode, like I said, it's going to be the calendar and what's called the Gregorian calendar. Um, it's very interesting. It's a way for you to keep track of the date and the time. And uh, it's basically like we did last episode. We learned about the date object. And the date object is really good for keeping track, to, track of the date and the time, except that there's one big problem in which you cannot, you can only use milliseconds to keep track of the date and the time. You can only use that. Um, value just milliseconds right if you don't know what I'm talking about then just go ahead and watch that episode last episode but um, the calendar object is really good because you can um, actually use where you can set each individual value for the date or the time for example you can set the year of the calendar you can set the month the hour you know you can set the time well I know the the date is a unit of time but basically you can also set the time which is going to be like you know the hour the minute the second stuff like that right you can also set those individually and you don't have to use milliseconds which is really nice because that can get really confusing and you would have to use a converter I mean I'm assuming you can't do milliseconds in your head obviously but um you would have to use a converter because you know that would take too much time but anyway so yeah we're going to be doing that so let's get right into it so to use the calendar object you're just going to do calendar um, and then import that of course and you're, as you can see here we're importing it from the utilities package because calendar is a utility and I'm going to be teaching about the different utilities in these next few videos in the last the past few videos I've been teaching about the utilities anyway so we're making calendar object now so we need to create uh, give it a name right so we'll just call it calendar so calendar like that is equal to I hope yeah I spell calendar right I for some reason I just want to spell it with an E but that's not how you spell it spell it with an A at the end so yeah anyway so calendar calendar is equal to new calendar except that you can't actually do that as you can see here if you're um, if you type calendar as you can see here, it's gonna auto complete for you but there's no um, parentheses here so watch this if it opens up like this right and so that's really weird looking so that is because calendar the class calendar is actually abstract meaning you cannot create a concrete object out of it you can't create objects out of an abstract class right so what you need to do is just get an instance of a calendar class right so you can do it like this so calendar calendar is equal to calendar dot get instance and what this will do is get an instance of the calendar class so that you have a basically a date and a time okay and so since you're not providing any parameters that's just going to get the date and the time of right now on your computer right so right now it's 6 54 p.m. 4 23 2019 so that's our current date and time so that's going to be the day and time assuming I run the program right now but of course since it's now 655 if I run it right now it's going to be 655 right so that's how that works pretty simple ignore the console we didn't that was just me testing it out but anyway so as you can see here we have the documentation for the calendar class here um, if you don't see anything like this of course you can do if you well first click on something right and then do control Q and that'll pull up the documentation for whatever you want to know about and so it won't be up here the first time you open it so let me close it I'll show you how to open it so control Q and so it should show up something like this and then it's not gonna be exactly the same because I'm using a special theme but anyway go to the options and then do open as tool window and now it's gonna be on the side somewhere where you can look at it better okay so yeah it's gonna tell you all about the command I mean the calendar class so if you can read through that you can it's very interesting but yeah let's actually get into the bread and butter now let's <laughs> I never said that before that sounds weird but now if we want to see the different values of the calendar we can grab the year we can grab the time anything like that so let's do that so we'll do s out so I'll put the year so we'll do year and so if you want to get the year or you want to get any value of the calendar you're going to do calendar dot get okay and as you can see here except one and as you can see here it accepts one parameter it's called the integer field and for some reason it's an integer right that's kind of weird but the way the calendar class works it has a bunch of constants um, within the class okay and each constant um, refers to like as you can see here we have the week of month we have the year the month any unit of time basically is going to be a constant within the calendar class okay and each of these constant has a number associated with it so for example if we want to use if you want to grab the year right if we want to do calendar uh, get year we can do calendar dot and then year right these are all the different constants that you can grab from the calendar class or object whatever whatever you want to call it so year if I want to find year I can just simply type year or as you can see here it tells you the integer that's associated with that constant so we could type one or year it doesn't really matter which one that you type okay so anyway now we're getting the year and now let's try printing that out to see if it works 
then as you can see here at the console it says year is equal to 2019 so it works perfectly right now we can grab individual pieces of our time right so now let's go ahead and print out the full date so let's try doing that so we'll do system out and we'll do the date like that and this is going to get kind of long so I'm going to move this or I'm going to close it real quick so the date is going to be um, well first we're going to need the month of course that's the first thing that you would show on a date so month as you can see here so we're going to do calendar dot get and now we'll do calendar dot month so that's just going to get the month of course and then now let's go ahead and add the slash you know because between the date you would have a slash you don't have to do it like this but that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna get the month and now I'm gonna get the day of the week you know or the day in the month so of course today's the 23rd so I'm gonna get that so we're gonna do calendar dot get and we're gonna get integer field calendar dot um, instead of day it would actually be date okay so day or day of the month might also work but we're gonna do date because that's what you usually do to grab the day of the month or whatever you want to call it and so after that now we get the year as you can see here that's the final thing in a, in a typical date so yeah we're going to get the year so calendar dot get uh, calendar dot year and keep in mind calendar and calendar are not the same thing this one's referring to the actual class you know because it's it's abstract we need to grab it from or is it abstract well I know it's abstract but it also might be static so we're grabbing the constant from the actual class here but yeah the point is it's not different because this one's capital C and this one's lowercase c this one's your variable or object in this case and this one's the actual class okay so anyway just in case you didn't know that so this should print out the full date so let's try doing that so we'll run this code here and as you can see here it says the date is equal to 3 23 2019 which is similar to our date our date is actually 4 23 2019 so why does it say 3 and the reason it says 3 is because it's um, zero based meaning that of course like if you think of an array right if we have an array of all the different months in the year right so, you know, January through um, December, right? Uh, January is actually going to be zero in the array, and then December is going to be 11 in the array. Even though there's 12 months, of course, it's zero based, meaning that the first value in an array will be zero. So what I'm trying to say is basically the way it works is that the month th that it returns is going to be um, zero based, meaning that if it's referring to the first month, it's going to be zero, and then so on. So if it's referring to the fourth month, in our case, April, it's going to be saying three that's what it's going to return okay so usually if you want to do that I mean if you want to just um, so usually what you want to do if you want to convert it to the actual number month you would just go ahead and put this one within parentheses and do plus one so now it's going to add it and make sure you have these parentheses because order of operations and stuff like that it's just not going to work if you don't do that so let's try printing this out now and see if it works and so now we get 423-2019 which is the current date so that works perfectly right so this is going to be your date right there and so now let's add the time so we can do the time pretty much the same way. We're just grabbing each individual value from the calendar object that we have. So output time uh, calendar oops plus calendar dot get calendar dot hour. So we're gonna get the hour. Oops, hour. If I can type correctly. So hour, and then we're gonna separate that by a um, colon. Yeah, that's a colon. <laughs> uh, calendar dot get uh, calendar dot minute so we're gonna get the minute after the hour of course and then after that we can we can get the seconds if, if we want to of course it's your choice you can do whatever you want I'm just demonstrating this for you and so we'll do calendar dot get calendar uh, seconds right second can we do milliseconds we should be able to millisecond yeah we can if you want to but yeah we're gonna do seconds and there we go so that's gonna display the, the time hopefully if we did that correctly so let's go ahead and run this and see if it works and boom now we get the time is equal to seven so the seventh hour which as you can see here at seven o'clock seven o one p.m. the uh, first minute and then 24 for uh, 24 seconds okay so that's correct so that's our current time so yeah that's basically just how you get you know the different values from the calendar in case you want to get a specific a unit of time from the calendar but also of course we have this this little problem with the month it's not a problem but it's kind of interesting so if we want to convert it to the English form of the month like if you wanted to say if we wanted to say January instead of you know zero for example we can convert it so we'll try doing that so let me show you how to convert it so usually what you want to do here I'm not going to type it all out because there's a lot of type out but usually what you want to do is just have a um, an array here just one in usually you want to have an array here and then in this array you're going to have each month in it right so zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so that's going to be all the months right there's twelve of them but of course a zero base that's base so you start at zero so now whenever you want to get the date or get the, t the month from the date or the calendar, I guess, you could simply convert it. So like this, we'll do month 
and then we'll say months and then inside the brackets here we could specify what index and of course whenever we call upon calendar .get calendar month that's going to return the index for us right so it's automatically converting it to the English form of the month so if we go ahead and run this we should get April in English right so APR no it stands for April obviously but yeah that works perfectly now as you can see here that's how you convert it from the index to the month in English right so that's how you do that in case you ever want to do that very interesting but yeah that's how you get any of the values from the calendar but now how do you set the calendar so let's say that you set it up here you know you're setting it to the current date um, let's say you want to change it after that right how do you change the values in a later point in time so you can simply do that by calendar dot set and now you can set any of the values as you can see here there's different um, overrided methods for this method here but um, let's just try the first one here or the second one here so we can provide an integer which is going to be the year so we can do 2019 that's the year and then now it wants the month and so we're going to do um, we'll do zero because it's going to be zero based so we're going to start the January the first month and then finally after that we'll have the date which is going to be 16 okay so if you want to provide the hour of day and then the minute or the seconds we can also do that with the other overrided methods here but we're just going to keep it simple and do those so now let's print out the current date um, like we did here we're just going to go ahead and copy this and we'll just do well actually we'll just print that out like oops boom and now we'll say new date and then we're going to, we're going to run this and now we'll see if we if it uh, correctly set the values right so now it says new date is 1 16 2019 which is different from what it was before right but now there's also another way we could do it. if you want to set individual units of time like we did here we got individual units of time like the year the month the hour the date anything like that we can also set the individual units of time so we could do calendar dot set and then as you can see here we do control p to pull up the parameters we can see that int field is one of the parameters and then int value so we, the field would be um, the calendar dot and then the constant right that's going to be the field so if you want to change the if you want to change the year for example we could do calendar dot set calendar dot year oops year and then now we can give it a new year so we'll say 1978 and so now it should print out that it should print out 1978 as the new date so let's check that out and as you and now as you can see here it says 1978 and of course we can do that for the second anything like that if we want to change those values but we're going to keep it simple but yeah that's pretty much it actually that's how you use the calendar objects or the calendar class whatever you want to call it and it's pretty simple and there's also some other methods that you can use with the calendar object if you want to you can get some other stuff if you want to know what these methods mean do control q of course and it says it returns whether this calendar represents a time before the time represented so that's basically a method that compares a, um, another calendar object i guess you could say so then you have you know get first day of the week get the greatest minimum you know a bunch of stuff like that you can get the week year you can get the time zone um you can do a bunch of stuff right and also there's actually an easier way to print out the time if you don't want to do everything individually like that you can also, you can also do uh, calendar dot get time and I know that seems stupid because I showed you all of this you know to get the time but this one actually returns a date object which is going to be automatically converted to the English format so if we print this out if we do control Q it says returns a date right so that's going to be in milliseconds but I think the way it works it converts it to this I may be wrong, but anyway, so it's going to return a date object. So sometimes you might want to get, or you might sometimes you might want to customize your date, right? So you want to call upon the individual values like we did up here. So that's why you might not want to use this method, right? So anyway, I hope you like that. That's how that works. Um, but before we go, I'm going to show you the Gregorian calendar, which is a um, a subclass of the calendar class, I believe. So the Gregorian calendar is very cool. It can, a better version of the calendar, I guess, I guess you could say. It's not very different at all. It's very similar, except the main difference is that a Gregorian calendar is actually concrete. It's not abstract like the calendar class. So if we can make we can make one like we would make a normal object basically, right? So we'll say the Gregorian calendar. Gregorian calendar. Hope I spelled that right. So now we can create a Gregorian calendar by doing Gregorian calendar and then we'll give it a name of GCal if you want to. Is equal to new Gregorian calendar. And now as you can see here it works perfectly, right? This one didn't work like that because it's abstract, but this one's concrete, so we can call upon it like this to create a new Gregorian calendar object. And yeah, so this will, um, of course, just use the current date and time if you don't provide any parameters, but since um, it's concrete, I believe we can provide our own parameters, right? So we can do Control-P, and we can see that we can provide all these different parameters. Of course, we can provide the year, 2019, the month, um, 4, which is probably going to be zero-based, I believe. And then we have the day of the month, so 14, and of course, we can set those different values, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, 
so we can initialize it if you want to instead of using our local time. So that's the, basically the main difference that I want to show you with the Gregorian calendar, but you can also call upon, um, you can also get the constants that you would do with the normal calendar, but instead of calling upon Gregorian calendar dot year, you would call upon calendar dot year. It still works like that. So let me show you. So if you want to get the year, so um, S out year, we could simply do uh, Gregorian or gcal dot get, and we could say undo calendar dot year like that. And so now we can get the year and print it out just like that. So as you can see here, let's see, boom, boom. Now it says year 2019, right? So that works. That's how you get the year. So yeah, that's how you get the year from the Gregorian calendar or any of the values, you know, just call upon the calendar and then call upon the corresponding constant, right? So yeah, I hope you like this. This is basically just a simple rundown of, of how to use the calendar in the Gregorian calendar objects. They're very simple, but they can be very complex if you don't know, but now you know, so that's cool. So yeah, if you have any questions about what we did this episode, I'll be glad to help you. Just ask a question in the comment section below. Also, we have a Discord link in the description below. If you want to check out our Discord, you can go in the description and click on the Discord link, and then you can join our Discord. So make sure you do that. It's very nice. We have a bunch of people who can help you if you have any problems and stuff like that, right? So also, before I go, there's also all of the code from today's episode in the description. So if you want to see all of the code, you know, for future reference, if you want to save this, you can save it in your bookmarks or whatever. So I'll leave that link for you in the description, like I said. So that's pretty much it. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.